Hi, my name is Alex, and in this episode of Magic Missile Minis, I'm going to be sculpting another member of my D&D party. In this video, I'm going to be sculpting a sentient dog. I start by making the armature as normal, cutting out a wire and then folding it in half. But when I start to twist out the torso, I do that more towards the center of the folded wire, making that around the length that I'm going to want the torso to be. And then once I've got that around the size that I need, I'm actually going to come back in with some pliers and cut off the end of the wires that are attached. And now you can kind of see where I'm going with this, creating the armature for all four legs without having to add an extra bit of wire. I then start doing a little bit of posing and can attach that to one of the cork bottles I use as a sculpting handle. The only thing I don't like about this way of making an armature is how if you don't twist the wires tightly enough, the two wires can be a little bit loose, so you might want to add a little bit of super glue to this. But anyway, as you can see me doing here, I start adding the first layer of green stuff. I also changed the pose just a little bit after this first layer because I had talked to the player for this character and he wanted the character to be swinging around a flail. So I added a little bit of strain to the pose to help simulate the motion of the character. With the pose where I want it, I can start adding a little bit more meat to the bones of this character. The dog that this character is based off of is a pit bull. So I have a bunch of different images of pit bulls pulled up on my browser so that I can actually have some reference for how the dog is shaped. Which again is one of those things that I feel like I say a lot, but having reference for what you're uh, sculpting is always really, really important. Otherwise your miniatures are going to end up looking something like this, which we don't want. Once we have the basic musculature in place, I also add a little bit of green stuff that's going to act as the neck, so we have something to build the head off of later on. And I also make sure to add some details on all of the paws. Once all of that sets, we take a little bit of green stuff and a wire and attach that to the neck of the dog. And what this is going to be is the flail that I mentioned this dog has in the beginning of the video. Obviously adding a little ball at the very end of it, which is going to be the head of the flail. Adding some more green stuff onto the neck, I can start sculpting out the basic shape of the head for this dog. Again, making sure to look at my reference so I have a good idea of what shape a pit bull's head looks like. Also making sure to add little divots into the head that I can add the eyeballs once it sets. While it sets, I start adding some packs that the dog has on his back, as you can see me doing here. The way I'm going to design this is giving him two packs, one on either side, as well as like a bed roll kind of hanging over his shoulders. And so I sculpt those into kind of a basic square shape. And using one of my rubber sculpting tools, I make a little lip for where the flap of this pack is going to be. Sculpting that into a curved flap as per some images the player of this character sent me. Although it appears as though I didn't film it, I did take a needle and add a little bit of a seam line around the rim of the pouches. I then go ahead and add a little bit of green stuff into the eye sockets of the dog, although it's not very well filmed here. I then add a little bit more green stuff and start making the eyelids as well as some of the other details for the dog's face giving him a nose as well as some of the kind of cheek flaps that some pit bulls seem to have. Having those kind of fold around where the handle of the uh, flail that he's biting onto is going to be. While I let that set, I take some more green stuff and finish the kind of packs that he has, adding the bedroll I mentioned I was going to add earlier on in the video. Sculpting that in the same way that I sculpted the square pouches, but obviously just doing it in a different shape. I then also go around and add the many belts that are attaching all of the pouches onto the dog. If you're interested to know how I sculpt these belts, I have a video dedicated to that and a couple other things for adding details to miniatures, and you can go check that out in the card. I also finish up the pouches that I had made before by adding some more little belts and flaps on top of that to make them look a little bit more complete. This is again a detail that I saw on some of the reference images I was looking up for these pouches. So I go around adding a bunch of these all over the different pouches because I think they look really good and they're actually not very difficult details to add. After that, I also add some ears for the dog, sculpting that out with one of the metal ends of my sculpting tools. 
Also adding a tiny little bit of green stuff for the tail. Now the only thing left to sculpt is the flail. To sculpt out the chain for the flail, I did this in a kind of interesting way. You start by getting an even coating of green stuff on your wire. Then using one of your flat sculpting tools, you're going to want to sculpt four divots going along the piece of green stuff that you've sculpted. The idea is to get the cross section of this little bit of green stuff to look like a plus sign. And once you've done that, you can start sculpting in little divots along the chain that you're making. I hear you can see I started using a sculpting tool, but I think it would be better to just use a needle for this. And what you're trying to do is now create separations for the different lengths of chain. With the chain finished, I add a little bit more detail onto the sides of the mouth of the dog to kind of create what would be the ends of the handle for the flail. And after that, I also start adding the spikes for the flail. Just kind of sculpting out the points with my fingers and sometimes using some of the sculpting tools as well. And with those spikes added, the sculpt for this miniature is finished. And here you can see a little turnaround of the entire character. And you can see what I was talking about when I was earlier on, I mentioned adding some strain into the pose. It really makes the character look like he's moving. And here you can see the miniature with a layer of primer on it. I start the painting process by base coating the miniature with this kind of dusty brown color, which again was based off of some of the reference images I was sent. For this project, I'm using Vallejo model color, and I got this color by mixing flat brown, a little bit of black, as well as a little bit of white. Mixing in a little bit of the black and white paints with the main color that I'm going to be painting is a really good way of making the color a little bit more faded out. I then add increasing amounts of white to the paint and dry brush on some highlights. When I do highlights, I generally do highlights way brighter than I think I'm going to need them because when painting them under really good lighting, you can tell where the highlight's coming from. But if you're putting this on a gaming table, the highlights become a lot harder to see if they're more subtle. I then start painting the packs as you can see me doing here, painting them with a very, very dark brown, using more flat brown, more black, and a little hint of Citadel Colors McCarriage Blue. The way that I'm painting these pouches in leather is actually based off of a tutorial that I saw on Instagram. If you haven't seen Rod Davis on Instagram, he does some amazing tutorials. I think his at is at Rod's Mods. He's a fantastic miniature painter and I'll leave a link to his Instagram below. As you can see me doing here, I then add a quick dry brush of a slightly lighter brown, which I got from mixing more of Vallejo Model Colors flat brown with some of Vallejo Model Colors yellow ochre, which gives a really nice lighter brown uh, that isn't too grayed out by simply adding white to make it lighter. I then go over the packs with a dark brown wash using Citadel Colors Agrax Earthshade, applying a heavy coating of that onto the pouches, but a very, very light coating of that onto the face so that we get a little bit more detail to all of the folds and details in the face. And once that wash is dried, I go back to the lighter color I was using for the pouches and add some little scuff marks here and there to make them look kind of worn. I then paint the eyes with a little bit of black and a couple dots of white then switch over to painting some metallics, painting all of the belt buckles as well as the flail. And I got this dark uh, metallic color by mixing Vallejo model colors black and Vallejo model colors silver. And then to finish the miniature off, I go over the flail with a black wash to get into all the crevices of the chain. Then once the miniature has the base, the miniature is finished. This project was really fun to work on. It was interesting having to sculpt a real animal as opposed to a fantastical creature. I was also really happy with how the chain turned out, since I haven't actually sculpted that before, but I kind of had an idea of how it was going to work. Anyways, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to get notified when I release new videos. All of those things are super helpful for making the channel grow. But thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.